Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be checking out this cool class of integrals. We're only going to be doing three of them, but uh, they're just really fun to play around with. Um, so this class of integrals uses uh, what's called the fraction fractional part function, and it's represented by these curly bra brackets here. And basically, uh, there's a few different definitions here, but they all are basically the same thing. The fraction of x is x minus floor of x. If you don't know what floor of x is, it's the uh, it's a function that just returns the lowest integer or the highest integer which is less than or equal to x. So if x is an integer, it just returns x. But if x is um, a decimal, then it returns the integer uh, below x. And so what that means is the fractional part of x represents everything after the decimal place. So for example, uh, for I don't know 2.5, it's going to return just the 0.5 and it's going to subtract out all those integers. So overall, they make for some pretty cool integrals and some pretty cool patterns. And we're going to see the uh, Riemann zeta function here. We're going to see uh, the euler mascheroni constant. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's jump right into it. So the first thing we need to discuss is the euler mascheroni constant. Uh, it's defined by h of n minus ln n. Uh, or sorry, this is all uh, in the limit as n goes to infinity. This is equal to the euler mascheroni constant, which is approximately equal to, I don't know, I think it's like 0 0.566, or sorry, 0 0.577. And so basically h of n is just the sum from k equals 1 to n of 1 over k. It's just the harmonic series up to a certain point. And so, as you can see, h of n and ln n grow at essentially the same rate because the difference between them is a finite number. So this is going to be very useful when solving these integrals. So let's jump into the first integral. This is the integral from 1 to infinity of the fractional part of x over x squared dx. And the way that we want to do these integrals is we want to simplify the fractional part because the fractional part is not a function that can be easily uh, differentiated or integrated because it has all those discontinuities because if you look at the graph it looks like this like so it's not exactly a fun function to deal with so what we're going to do is we're going to split it up so that it's much easier to deal with so we're going to split this up into the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3 plus the integral from 3 to 4 plus the integral from 4 to 5 and so on and so forth all the way up to n n plus 1 right and this is obviously in the limit as n goes to infinity. And the reason we want to do this is because as long as x is, is between two consecutive integers, so for example, between 3 and 4, the fractional part of x will always just be x minus the lower integer, or x minus floor of x, right? So between 3 and 4, uh, the fractional part of x is just x minus 3. And so in each of these integrals, uh, the one from 1 to 2, and the one from 2 to 3, and the one from 3 to 4, we can pretty easily define the fractional part of x without having to mess with anything. And then we can take the values of these integrals, add them all together, and get the value of our original. So let's so show how we're going to do that. This is going to be the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the integral from n to n plus 1 of the fractional part of x over x squared dx. But as we said before, the fractional part of x between n and n plus 1 is just x minus n. Then if we go ahead and integrate, this first part is just 1 over x, so that's going to be ln x. And the second part is negative n over x squared, so the integral of that is just n over x. And this is going to be evaluated at n plus 1 and n. So we're going to get the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of ln n plus 1 minus ln n plus n over n plus 1 minus 1. All right. And so we're going to break this up into two parts, and we're going to look at each of them separately. So we're going to look at the partial sums, which I'll write as sk. And this just means the sum from n equals 1 to k of everything, right? All this stuff. 
So let's just first look at only this first part with the natural logs. If we write S1, that's just going to be the first term. And since ln of 1 is 0, that's just going to be ln2. If we write S2, that's going to be S1 plus the second term. And the second term is going to be ln3 minus ln2. I'm just plugging in um, 2 for n in both of these. And so we're going to end up subtracting out that ln2, and we're just going to end up with ln3. S3 is going to be the same idea. We're going to subtract ln3 and add ln4, so we're going to end up with ln4. And as you can see, sk overall is going to equal ln of k plus 1. And this is because this uh, sum is what's called a telescoping series, which means that each term subtracts part of the last term, and you end up with just some residue um, that it keeps accumulating over time. So often, uh, telescoping series will converge to a finite number. In this case, they're not, because as k goes to infinity, ln k plus 1 also goes to infinity. However, you'll see that it's going to remedy itself really quickly. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this 1 here as n plus 1 over n plus 1. And then what we're going to be able to do is cancel these ends with each other and we'll just end up with negative 1 over n plus 1, right? And so as we sum up negative 1 over n plus 1, what's going to end up happening? Well, when n equals 1, this is just going to be minus 1 half. When n equals 2, we're going to have minus 1 third. When n equals 3, we're going to have minus 1 fourth. And so in essence, we just have the negative harmonic series here. And so we can write that sk equals ln k plus 1 minus h of k plus 1. And this is because, um, for example, sk s1, that's the first term, and we're subtracting 1 half rather than 1. So that's why it shifted over to k plus 1. And the last thing we have to remember to do is we have to add back 1 because the first term, as we said, is minus 1 half. And so essentially, from this harmonic series, we've subtracted the the term that should be the first term of the harmonic series, which is 1 over 1, or just 1. And so we're adding it back here. That's why there's a plus 1 right there. And so essentially, we can take the limit as k goes to infinity of s of k. And this is going to be all of this. But as we said before, h of n minus ln n as n goes to infinity is the euler mascheroni constant. So ln k plus 1 minus h of k plus 1 as k goes to infinity is just negative gamma. And so overall, we're going to have 1 minus gamma. And that's going to be the answer to our integral. All right, let's go ahead and take on the next integral. So the next one, we're going to have the sum from 1 to infinity of the fractional part of x over x cubed dx. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into that summation notation and evaluate each of those little integrals. So as you can see, I just did the same thing that I did in the last uh, integral right here, and I just split it up into a sum. And now I'm going to go ahead and integrate. So first we have 1 over x squared, which when integrated is just going to be negative 1 over x. And then negative n over x cubed when integrated is going to be plus n over 2x squared, evaluated at n plus 1 and at n. So we're going to end up with the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 over n plus 1 plus 1 over n plus n over 2 n plus 1 squared minus 1 over 2n. And as you can see, this first part is again a telescoping series. So if we write out the first few terms, we're going to have negative 1 half plus 1 minus one third plus one half, right? I'll write these out right here. Minus one third plus one half, minus one fourth plus one third. And as you can see, these are all going to cancel with each other. Uh, I did that wrong. Um, but these are all going to cancel each other. And all we're going to be left with is this one at the beginning. And the quote-unquote last term will just be like 1 over n plus 1 in the limit as n goes to infinity, and so that's going to go to 0. So we don't have to worry about the series spiraling out of control. So this first part, we can just rewrite this, take this out of the sum, 
and just make it its own number right here, which we said was going to be 1. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to change this to n plus 1 minus 1. And so what we're going to what's going to end up happening is this first term is just going to be 1 half n plus 1. minus 1 over n plus 1 squared, 1 half over n plus 1 squared. So if we look at this first and this last term here, this is yet another telescoping series, except it's the same series as before, except it's just negative because the 1 over 2 n's, 1 over 2 n is um, being subtracted and the 1 half n plus 1 is being added. So overall, this is going to evaluate to negative 1 half. So I'll just go ahead and subtract that out here. This will become just positive 1 half instead of 1. And we'll take all this out. Now we're left with is this negative um, 1, 1 half n plus 1 squared. OK, so if we write out all these terms in order, we're going to have, uh, I'll just factor out the negative 1 half real quick. So if we write out these terms in order, it's going to be 1 fourth plus 1 ninth plus 1 sixteenth and so on and so forth. And this is looking like our basal problem, uh, zeta of 2, which is pi squared over 6. The only difference is that it's missing the first term, which is usually 1. And so essentially, this whole series is going to evaluate to a zeta of 2 minus 1, which is just uh, pi squared over 6 minus 1. So we'll just write this right here. And then if we simplify everything out, we will end up finding out that our series, or our uh, integral actually, I'm sorry, is equal to 1 minus pi squared over 12. All right, let's look into our next integral. So this is the last integral we'll do in this video. And that's the case where n equals 4. Um, it's pretty much the same as the last integrals, so uh, not much new stuff to see here. We'll, we'll just be using different series and simplifying them in different ways. So let's convert it into a sum. And then we'll go ahead and integrate. So the integral of 1 over x cubed is negative 1 half x squared, 1, 1 over 2 x squared. And the integral of negative n over x to the fourth is positive n over 3n cubed, or 3x cubed, sorry. And so if we go ahead and plug this in, we're going to end up with the telescoping series again. So as I said, the first two terms here are just yet another telescoping series. So if we write out the first few terms, we're going to have 1 half minus 1 eighth plus 1 eighth minus 1 over 18 blah 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 and all of these are going to end up canceling and so overall this series just evaluates to 1 half and I've left some space here because we're going to make some simplifications so first we're going to add 1 and subtract 1 as we've done in the past and then so this first part where we added 1 will just be 1 third n plus 1 squared and the part where we subtracted 1 will just be negative 1 third n plus 1 cubed. All right. And so if we look at the first and last terms, again, this is yet another telescoping series. Um, so if we write out the first few terms again, we'll get uh, this is going to be what? 1 12th minus 1 third plus 1 27th minus 1 12th, and then they start to repeat. And so we're going to end up subtracting all of these away again, and it's just going to evaluate to negative 1 third. So since this series is negative 1 third, we'll subtract 1 third from 1 half, and we'll get negative, or we'll get 1 sixth. And all we're left with is this lovely number right here, which is the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 over 3 n plus 1 cubed. So let's go ahead and factor out that negative 1 third. So this series is, again, just a sort of shifted Riemann, uh, a Riemann zeta function. And so we have a zeta of 3 right here, but we're missing the first term again. So this is overall just zeta of 3 minus 1. 
I can't really draw Zeta, so I'll try my hardest. I think that's what it looks like. And so if we go ahead and simplify everything out, we're going to end up adding one third, which means we'll get one half minus Zeta 3 over 3. And that is our answer. And this is our answer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it, it got a little bit repetitive um, since we kind of did the same problem over and over, but I really like doing all these different types of integrals and figuring out the strategies in order to split them up and uh, really take them apart. So I'm, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you liked all the infinite sums, the zeta function, the uh, Euler mas Mascheroni constant is always fun. And yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.